LED lighting has taken the world by storm. Commonly touted as the best form of lighting due to its energy efficiency, many people now use it exclusively in their homes and places of work. But are LEDs all they are cracked up to be? And does exposure to this light come with hidden health hazards? In this video we are going to look at how our light sources change so quickly and some of the major drivers behind the push. Don't worry, I'm not going to get into the highly technical science of light and LED technology. Instead, the idea is to provide an overview of the topic and some of the potential health problems to be aware of. Exposure to LEDs is on the rise, and while this video focuses on lighting, the problems cross over to other sources such as electronic screens. I'll also share with you my family's experience with different forms of lighting and what we have decided to use in our own home. Most people who have been born this century are very accustomed to being surrounded by light-emitting diodes or LEDs, whether in toys, computers, screens or lighting in buildings. But the widespread distribution of the technology is only as old as this current generation, even though the LED actually dates back to 1927 when Russian inventor Oleg Losev produced the first working model. Losev perished at the age of 38 in 1942 during the siege of Leningrad and the LED technology was largely dormant until the 1960s when they became common electronic components. By the 1970s LEDs were very cheap to produce and widely available to entire populations. These LEDs typically looked like this and produced only red light. For my husband Mark, red LEDs produced hours of frustration in the 1980s with Dick Smith electronic kits and the various projects that didn't always work for him. However, his faith in LEDs was soon restored with a trusty power indicator on the Bailey family's Commodore 64 and the associated data set record light indicating a transfer rate of 50 bytes per second going onto the tape. The problem for LED use in most lighting applications was both the lack of useful illumination levels and the lack of white light. Individual red, green and blue LEDs can be combined to create white light, but the result is usually poor. It was not until 1993 that high brightness blue LEDs were produced. These LED lamps could be coated with phosphor, which partially separates the blue light into red and green light, to create a mixed light that appeared white to our eyes. As a little segue, the inventor of the blue LED was Japanese engineer Suji Nakamura. Nakamura-san was working for the Nichia Corporation at the time, and their revenue soared by hundreds of millions over the next decade, largely on the back of the blue LEDs. Nakamura claimed that his reward from the company was a 20,000 yen bonus, equivalent to around $180. He subsequently sued Nichia and was eventually paid out around $8.1 million. While that may sound okay, it was reported that this was only enough to cover his legal expenses. As many of you are aware, that is one of the reasons why many in our community avoid the hopelessly fraudulent legal system. The Nakamura story has some parallels with the story of Carrie Mullis, the inventor of the PCR and his employer, the Cetus Corporation, which later sold the technology to Roche. You can watch my 2021 video, Carrie Mullis, Cancel Culture and COVID-19, for more on this. Coming back to the development of, quote, white LEDs, there was further technological advancements from the 1990s, including major improvements in energy efficiency. The light outputs rapidly increased, and as production costs came down, commercially viable products hit the market in the 2000s. In the 2010s, LED lighting became commonplace in many countries. In fact, many businesses and homes switched to using LED lighting exclusively, and some people now insist on it. Before we talk about the potential health risks of LED lighting, I'll outline our personal experience with this relatively new phenomenon. As our regular viewers will be aware, I often rely on the instincts of my husband Mark to first identify problems with products, whether it be pasteurized milk, sunscreen or shampoo. You can watch our videos for detailed information on all these topics. 
In the case of lighting, at our previous home, we almost exclusively used halogen lamps. However, a friend of ours was involved in a company that produced LED lamps and had been trying to convince us to switch to them, even offering to supply them for free. Mark had previously compared different lighting modalities and was unimpressed with LEDs, finding a lower quality illumination that produced glare and irritation to the eyes, particularly while reading. Additionally, there was no way to reproduce the warmth of halogen lights, and the LEDs made some rooms feel unnaturally cold. The big selling point of reduced power bills was not that compelling, as lighting was such a minimal proportion of our energy costs. Most evenings in that house, we only operated the lights for the one or two rooms that we were using. This meant only half a dozen halogen lamps needed to be on, consuming a total of 300 watts of power. Given that we had appliances such as a 3000 watt domestic water heater and an induction cooktop and oven of around 4000 watts, we were not too worried about the lights. Additionally, the supposed drawback of the halogens producing quote wasteful heat did not bother us as we used the lights much more during the colder and shorter days over winter. It was not until we were about to sell our previous home that we replaced the halogen lamps with the LEDs that our friend had given us. By then, many New Zealanders expected energy-efficient LED lighting, and we were advised that it would probably help with the sale of the house. We did note that although the light was not as pleasing as the halogens, it was certainly vastly improved over the earlier generation LEDs with much less glare. We were then wondering what to do with the 50 or so halogen lamps that we had removed, and fortuitously decided to package them up and put them in storage. I say fortuitously, as our new home has mostly halogen lighting, including in our office studio and all the bedrooms, so we are bathing in a warm halogen glow once again, with at least a few decades of spare lamps up our sleeve. In our experience, the comparisons between LED lamps and other lamps can be highly misleading. For example, this table featured on Wikipedia states that a halogen lamp has a lifespan of 1000 hours. However, that is for the high voltage versions, 120 volts in the US or 240 volts in countries like New Zealand. We run 12 volt halogen lamps via transformers and some of them have been going for over 15 years. By contrast, in the six months or so that we had exclusively LED lamps, three out of 44 failed over that short period. One or two other lamps would flicker if they were on for more than a few minutes. We guess that was due to a manufacturing fault, but it is not something we have ever experienced with halogens. In any case, it appears that other people have also noted concerns with the performance and claimed cost benefits of LED lighting. Another annoying effect of LED lighting is as they get older, they start to flicker. So using this light meter to measure lux, so you can see we're getting a reading of about anywhere from 5 to 15, 20, anywhere around this light fixture. So on the opposite side of the room, we've installed new light bulbs here and we're getting measurements of about 115. So as you can see, light bulbs that are a year to a year and a half old are a fraction of the light coming out of the new ones. So you can't go up and replace one light bulb here and one light bulb there when they blow out. You have to replace them all or you're gonna have inconsistent light around your building. With regard to the health risks of LED lighting, one of the major concerns is the nature of blue light. The most natural form of light comes from the sun, and blue light is only a minority component of the source. There are numerous benefits that come with exposure to sunlight, but the massive increase in blue light through LED lighting, as well as smartphones, computer screens and TVs, is unlikely to come with any benefits. One of the major short-term adverse effects that has been recorded is the disruption of optimal sleep cycles. For example, this study published in 2015 looked at the negative effects of using light-emitting electronic devices before bed. Although not LED lighting per se, it is still a form of short wavelength light and constantly disrupted sleep can lead to all sorts of health issues. As early as 1999, an experiment demonstrated retinal damage in rats exposed to blue light over 3-6 to six hours. However, the levels for damage to human eyes and problems such as macular degeneration and cataracts is not as well described. 
Additionally, the risk is probably higher for those staring at screens all day, rather than simply being in a room with LED lighting. A further factor is the time of day of the exposure, with nighttime exposure likely to cause more health problems that go beyond just the effects on the eyes. When it comes to the materials that LED lamps are made of, they are touted as being safe and inert when intact. However, those in the field have noted some suspicious findings in at least some versions. So as is the case with all plastics, when this bulb is in here and it heats up, all the plasticizers, the BPAs, BPHs, BCBs, PCBs, or whatever they have are here. Because this is an explosion proof casing, it was never allowed to get out and it settled on the glass. Obviously we have to clean it, but if this wasn't in here and you had 200 of these in your building, all these toxins are coming out into your environment. That can't possibly be healthy. I'm not going to deeply dissect some of the studies that have been done in humans and animals because we are still in the middle of a first generation experiment when it comes to longer term exposure. And while I do not endorse anything the European Commission says, including their so-called green policies, even their 2018 report on the subject conceded that Reliable information on the dose-response relationship for adverse health effects for the healthy general public is not available in the scientific literature for all wavelengths emitted by LED devices. Since the use of LED technology is still evolving, the committee considers that it is important to closely monitor the risk of adverse health effects from long-term LED use by the general population. Meanwhile, governments have thrown caution into the wind and have been pushing LEDs through promotions, subsidies, or even outright banning of older lighting modalities. For example, in recent years, the Indian government has distributed 370 million LED bulbs to the citizens for free. That's right, apparently governments have the ability to do things at no cost to anyone. It's a write-off for them. How is it a write-off? They just write it off. <laughs> write it off what? In New Zealand, there is a website that advises us that LEDs are the best bulbs for your home. The best, Jerry. The best. We can also see that it is a website run by the New Zealand government. Apparently, they want us to reduce our energy consumption because it is causing climate change. The New Zealand state-owned national electricity grid is also struggling to keep up with demand which has actually been fairly stagnant for the past two decades. Of note, the population of New Zealand has gone up far more over the same time period. It's all a bit of a mystery in a country that has abundant natural resources, and despite recent immigration, still a relatively low population density, but perhaps as Milton Friedman once said, if the government were to take over the Sahara Desert, there would be a shortage of sand in five years. Anyway, like anything that governments are promoting or attempting to legislate, the sudden push by them around the world to roll out LED lighting should be viewed with scepticism. It is coming under the guise of energy efficiency and saving the environment, themes that have been co-opted by the global criminocracy, as researchers such as Paul Kudenek have exposed. Please check out Paul's publications and you can watch my video presentation of his essay, the corruption is real and sickening for more on these nefarious entities that claim to be saving the earth. Don't get me wrong, our family does not dismiss LED lighting completely. We have found that it is a game changer for outdoor lighting and have run underground lines for over 100 metres to power many lights that provide useful illumination, something that could not be done with other lights over those distances. We also have an LED torch that we call Night Sun due to its ridiculous ability to light up huge areas. However, these lighting sources are only used infrequently and we do not spend much time exposed to them. Additionally, we can also sympathise with people who run off-grid homesteads or remote cabins and are completely dependent on limited solar power generation. For my family, we have elected to use the lighting that we prefer and that is mostly from halogen lamps. With regard to the potential health dangers of LED lighting, due to the lack of long-term information, we stick to the precautionary principle. As we have done with Wi-Fi, we generally avoid it as much as possible inside our home. 
It may cost more, but saving money should not be the only consideration when your health is on the line. The eye irritation and headaches we have sometimes experienced with LED lighting has been enough for us to be wary of the much hyped technology. We have to accept that we are all being exposed to more blue light than ever before, but we can certainly take steps to mitigate against it. Keep the conversation going in the comments by sharing your experiences with different light sources, as well as any further insights you have into LED technology. If you enjoyed this video, please visit supportdrsam.com 